In the school backyard, Aina walks among a bunch of desks on fire and is suddenly attacked by a creepy girl that reminds her of her friend Chiwan. More ghosts appear in the area and Aina finds herself surrounded, but when she thinks she's about to die, she wakes up in her bed at the school dorms. Things are tense on the whole campus because this is the last week of exams and everyone is under pressure. Aina has less patience than usual for the trust fund kids, who get extra privileges in the school just for having money, but she gets to relax at least a little bit when she hangs out when her best friend Yoon and school prankster Yoon, who has a crush on her. The teachers are tense as well, Choi hasn't smiled in forever, and Huang keeps scolding Lee for being too harsh on the students. During an exam, Baum keeps hearing whispers around the classroom and suddenly yells when he sees a creepy face appearing on his test, causing him to fall off his chair. Huang comes to check on him, obviously finding nothing on the paper, but he does notice the worrisome scars on Baum's wrist, although he says he didn't do it and that it was her. Moments later, a funny song suddenly starts playing from the speakers. The teachers don't allow the test to be interrupted, but they discover this is one of Yun's pranks, and as punishment he's asked to come to school over the weekend to help the teachers with some chores. In the afternoon, the teachers have a meeting with the principal, who informs them students from their sister school will be visiting them in 10 days, so he wants them to make a temporary class with their top students and start training them this weekend. The following day, the test results are posted and Aina and Yoon discover they'll be part of the special weekend class, which is a big deal considering the top three as usual are taken by the rich kids. When Baum comes over to find out his own grades, he begins feeling dizzy and notices the creepy girl from Aina's dreams in the middle of the crowd. After a few seconds, the creepy girl's face fusions with Aina's, causing Baum to attack her. Other students immediately pull him away and an ambulance is called so he can be taken to a mental hospital. As the nurses drag him away Baum yells at everyone to tell them they'll die soon. In the evening, Guard Kim is doing his usual rounds when he suddenly hears a noise coming from under the building floor. It's Baum, who has escaped the mental hospital and has shown up at school with his hands covered in blood. He's obviously scared and keeps staring at something, but Kim doesn't know what. When the guard moves his flashlight for a better look, Baum gets a full view of a decaying body and runs away as he screams. The next day is Saturday, and the special class begins with the teachers asking student Song to collect everyone's phones since they won't be allowed during this special day. Yun has also come over to work on his punishment. When the class begins, Huang notices a girl called Min is missing but assumes she's just late and begins the lesson anyway. Meanwhile Song is on his way to take the phones to the staff room when he hears a mysterious voice calling his name. He follows the voice to the bathroom where he's shocked to be suddenly attacked by an unseen force that heavily wounds him before dragging him by the ankle under a stall door and then into the ceiling. Back in the classroom, Choi begins her lesson by playing an educational video that gets abruptly interrupted by a terrifying sight. Min is trapped inside a glass container that has an equation written on its side. Not taking it seriously yet, Choi tries to turn it off to no avail and sends Aina to the staff room to check what's going on. As she runs there, Aina notices every screen in the hallway is showing the same thing, and when she makes it to the staff room she discovers the internet has suddenly gone down. At that moment, a creepy voice comes from the TVs announcing everyone will be taking a new kind of test, if they don't answer the exercises then students will die one by one. If anyone leaves the campus, they'll also die, and all questions must be answered to get the full answer. Teachers and students are equally confused, not knowing what to make of this. To make matters worse, Kim comes in to confirm all phone lines have been cut off. None of the students have their cell phones with them, and the teachers discover theirs have been broken. Kim is sent to keep an eye outside while Aina and the teachers join the others in the classroom, where everyone is screaming because the glass container Min is in has started to fill with water. Thinking this may be another prank, Lee attacks Yun and Huang has to pull them apart to stop things from getting violent. An argument begins among the teachers and everyone is so distracted by this that they forget about the equation until it is too late, once the container is full of water, Min drowns. Seeing a real death convinces Lee that Yun didn't do this, and he decides to go across the street to see if he can find a phone. Choi's reminders of the rule are ignored and the students decide to copy Lee, but as they soon as they make it to the reception, they discover the rule had been true. Lee comes back covered in blood and dies as soon as he crosses the door while the voice reminds them they need to stay inside. Meanwhile Baum has managed to get inside the building too and he wanders around, only stopping to doodle on a notebook while he hears more noises. Next, the creepy voice informs everyone their next exercise will have an audio clue and Hurt's song to make him scream into the microphone, it also makes him confess that his sin is having a greedy mother. Then the voice announces that the exercise can be found in the auditorium, where they must put together a phrase related to greed using the words waiting for them on the floor. After lots of brainstorming, Aina and Huang manage to think of a fitting sentence, but they don't make it in time and Song's body is dropped in the middle of the auditorium, his face covered by the candle wax the bad guy used to hurt him and the answer to the riddle written on his chest by scars. On top of it all, a student named Cha is now missing too, which gives Aina an idea that makes her run out of the auditorium. Yun follows her and finds her looking at the student's ranking, which confirms her theory, they're being killed in the ranking order. Min and Song had first and second positions, and the missing Cha is the third. Yun will be the fourth, and Aina herself comes fifth. In the auditorium, the rich kids think they would be safer if they hid in their dorm so they make a plan to sneak there, 
Yun overhears this and joins them. They get permission to leave the auditorium from Huang by pretending to need to go to the toilet, and with a quick run they make it to the dorms, unaware that Baum can hear them running through the hallways. At that moment, Aina and Yun return to the auditorium and tell the teachers about their discovery, meaning they need to find Yun as soon as possible to protect her. They end up diving the class into two groups, one guided by Choi, and the other by Huang. By the time night falls, Cha has been missing for six hours and there's been no progress in the search. Suddenly, something begins shaking the door of the dorm where the escape group is hiding, and the strange force creates a hole in the wood in order to grab a student's hair and pull his head through, instantly killing him. Meanwhile Huang's group sees a light being turned on at a random classroom and goes to check on it only to discover the next exercise. Looking at the pictures on the board, they need to decode a password to use on the computer on the desk. While they get down to business, Choi's group sees lights flickering at a dorm window and rushes there to find the students panicking in the hallway. Everyone's yelling and pulling at each other, not knowing what's going on and not seeing Baum hiding in the stairs because he can see the creepy ghost in the hallway with them. After a few moments of utter chaos, the lights start working normally again and they discover that the attacker made a mistake. They kidnapped a girl named Su Jin instead of Yoon, who never left her bedroom in the first place. In the classroom, Huang's group finds out the answer is on a warm spring day, remember the auditorium. They put the password in the computer, but it's already too late, Cha is dead, and the body appears on camera together with the decaying face of a creepy woman. Such horrifying sight makes them scream and run out until they finally reunite with Choi's party. Afterward, everyone goes to the cafeteria so they grab a bite. While discussing the clue from the password, Aina realizes this is related to her former best friend Chiwon. She used to be the number one student in their class because she always studied really hard in order to keep her scholarship since her family was poor to afford this school. One day, when the ranking was posted after another important exam, everyone was shocked to see Chiwon got sixth place, which meant she would have to leave the dorm after the next term. A few days later, Chiwon showed up dead in the auditorium under mysterious circumstances. The students in the cafeteria begin to wonder if Chiwon's ghost is doing this to them, causing a clearly uncomfortable Huang to drop the subject because ghosts don't exist. After Kim comes to join them for dinner too, a melody starts playing somewhere in the building announcing the next test. Huang decides he's had enough and goes looking for the murderer while Choi, Aina, and Yun follow the song to the staff room, where a puzzle awaits them in the form of an anagram. To solve it, they must put the pictures together to recreate a photograph of the school. While Su Jin is also heavily wounded by the attacker before she's put inside a washing machine, Yun retrieves a matching picture from the reception to use as a guide during the solving of the puzzle. The plan works and the answer is revealed to be I know who killed me, my anger will endure, face the truth. Meanwhile Huang keeps hearing weird noises outside and seeing shadows in the corner of his eyes. Suddenly, a mysterious force attacks him and pushes him away, so Huang runs to hide in a closet and has to make a huge effort not to scream while a knife keeps stabbing the door. Luckily, the attacker goes away and Huang finally gets to escape, bumping into Choi and the teens on his way out. Before they can share information, they begin hearing a beeping sound that they follow to discover it comes from a washing machine announcing the end of its cycle. Inside, Su Jin lies dead. Choi is more sure that this is connected to Chiwon now, but when she turns to Aina for her opinion, she finds her gone. In the cafeteria, Yun realizes everyone around her has abruptly fallen asleep, but instead of worrying about what it may mean, she puts on the headphones of her music player to distract herself. This results in Yun not hearing the decaying woman approaching her from behind to kidnap her properly this time. At the same time in the dorms, Aina follows a mysterious whisper until she finds the creepy girl from her dreams drawing on the doodles bomb made earlier. The ghost tries to grab Aina and makes her scream, but by the time the teachers and Yun find her, the creepy girl is gone. Now they need to think of a serious plan, so Huang asks Yun how he pulled off the prank last time. Once the boy explains the kind of connections he made, the group goes to the PA room and finds the wire that runs throughout the whole school for all the screens, thus they follow it underground to see if it can take them to the creepy woman. However the first person they find is Baum, who doesn't hesitate to attack Aina as soon as he sees her. Yun doesn't hesitate either and comes to Aina's defense, but in the struggle, Baum stabs him until he dies before turning to Aina again. This time it's Huang who stops Baum, and in a fit of fury, he kills Baum with multiple hits. There's no time to grieve because the melody announcing a new riddle plays once more, this time together with Yun screaming. Aina and the teachers follow the noise into a hallway with a locked door at the end, to open it they must solve the exercise written on it. Behind this door Yun is hanging from her ankle while having to watch a dead min float and a candle slowly burn the rope that keeps her up. Fortunately Choi recognizes the necessary math and quickly discovers the combination number, allowing them to open the door and rush inside. While Choi finds a bunch of paper sheets with all the tests on them, Huang tries to find a way to put Yun down safely and Aina hugs her to comfort her through her fear. Sadly the creepy woman doesn't care that they solve the test, she still brings Yun up before letting her fall in one go, causing Yun to die as soon as she touches the floor. When Huang sees there are steps he can take to the roof, he climbs them and finds the creepy woman, who tries to stab him. Luckily Huang thinks quickly and fights back, managing to kill the woman after some struggle and finally putting an end to all this. 
Sometime later, a memorial for the lost students is held in the auditorium. Ina can't stand the overwhelming pain and goes to catch some air on the roof, where she's shocked to find the paper sheets with the test plans. There's also a bigger surprise, a photograph of Chiwon with her family, revealing her parents were the creepy woman and Kim the guard. Speaking of Kim, he jumps on Ina from behind and kidnaps her, showing he had been working with his wife all along and he wants to see their plan through to the end. After tying Ina to a chair, Kim fills the auditorium with gas as he begins to talk through the speakers. He admits to being Chiwan's father and that he's happy all the rich parents finally know the pain he's been suffering for two years. Then, he plays on the big stage screen a recording of Chiwan being murdered that he had found on her phone, he also asks the murderer to reveal himself. While everyone in the auditorium panics about possibly being in the company of a murderer, it is revealed that the person that killed Chiwan had been Huang. It turns out Huang was paid by the rich parents to give their kids better grades, and that was the only reason Chiwan had gotten sixth place. She confronted Huang to ask him to make things right or she would go to the principal, thus Huang reacted by killing her. All this had been seen by Bong, who watched instead of helping, and that's why since then he imagined Chi Wan followed him everywhere. In the auditorium, Huang finds himself cornered and goes crazy, grabbing the emergency axe from the wall and threatening anyone that comes close. Before he can hurt anybody though, Kim shows up and gets his revenge by taking the axe from Huang and killing him slowly with it, ignoring the teacher's apology. Kim's flashbacks reveal he had killed the original guard so he could take the job, meaning he's been planning this since Chi Wan's death two years ago. Seeing as Kim is there, Choi runs out of the auditorium and rescues Aina. A few weeks later, Aina checks on the student ranking and is pleased to see she's won first place. But as she turns around, her face and Chi Wan's become one, implying she may have been possessed all along and that's why Baum kept attacking her. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.